practice and we have to take it on the chin. It's, it's disappointing. Um, it was a night we should have got three points against a team who's been struggling in the league and yet we do know that there's no easy games. They they almost beat Shrewsbury at the weekend. You know, I think 10 minutes in the end, Shrewsbury got a late equaliser. It was so, there's no mugs in this game and uh, in this league. We Everybody works hard, everybody's very competitive, everybody's strong. Um, and so we, we, have to, we have to accept it. We've got a point and we have to move on. Unbelievable. The final whistle has just gone and Blackburn Rovers fail to beat 24th place Plymouth Argyle at home. We'll talk about the match, the shambolic performance. I don't even know where to begin. That's right, folks, back once again with another match review. Now, before I get going, I want you to stop what you're doing, swallow what you're chewing, hit that subscribe button, keep you bang up to date with all things Black and Rovers. That is if you want to, because right now, I don't blame you if you don't, because Rovers, we're supposed to be one of the hot topics for promotion in this division. And to be honest with you, we haven't even got our second gear. It's been, it's been sloppy. Uh, and, and I've been a, a huge Mowbray fan, and I still am. Don't get me wrong. I think he is the right man to get us uh, back into the, the championship. But after this result, which was a 1-1 draw at home against bottom of the table, Plymouth Argyle, who were rooted to the bottom of the table. It's not like they are bottom by a goal difference or something like that. They are rock bottom, and they've just come up from League uh, League Two last season. So this is this was a no-brainer, and it should have been three points in the bag for Blackman. Now let's let's turn the clock back to uh, Saturday when we also thought playing up against Oldham again, another team struggling. Uh, there was a prime opportunity to get six points out of these two games, and we walk away with one. And, that, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Let's just take a look at the statistics here. 25 shots for Blackburn. Four, only four on target. Only four of them on target. 25 stinking shots. Now, there's something clearly wrong here. 16 corners. You know, this, this, this reminds me of the, of the game where we took on Newcastle last season at Ewood Park, where it was so heavily dominated by Newcastle. And then in the end, we, we won it by a Charlie Mulgrew a free kick, I believe, um, if, if, if my memory serves me correctly. We did deserve three points then, and, and, but we did. And it's the same situation with this one. Plymouth realistically deserved to be going home with nothing. And to be honest with you, when they had an opportunity, they scored. Uh, Graham Carey, a, a, a dangerous prospect no matter what. He comes in, you know, as an easy... An easy goal for him to score. I know it was, it was beautifully executed, but he was given too much time, too much space uh, to, to put the ball in the back of the net. It was Bradley Dack who did come up with a bit, little bit of magic uh, to put us a uh, level pegging at half time. So credit where credit's due for Bradley Dack. But when we come out of that second half, it should have been all guns blazing. And to be honest with you, I'm getting really frustrated with with Marcus Antwinson, Dominic Samuel, and Danny Graham. Three strikers who you would think would be able to put the ball in the back of the net with ease in this division, and we can't seem to do it for Toffee. We cannot seem to score a goal. There's the Gladwin opportunity towards the end where I should have won it. And there was another one. There should, there should have been two, there's two or three chances we could have won it, but we didn't. Unbelievable. Let's just recap the lineups here before I get into the real thicker things here. This is the Plymouth lineup. Leveron was in goal. Sawyer, Edwards, Sonongo, Taylor Sinclair, Bradley, Diego Ara, Fox, Carey the goal scorer, Jervis and Grant. They didn't even have their top goal scorer on the, on the pitch. If Fletcher was on the pitch, who knows? It could have been, uh, could have been even more embarrassing. And here's a look at the, the Rovers lineup. Raya, Caddis, Nayimbi, Mulgrew, Williams, Dak, Whittingham, Smallwood, Bennett, Graham, and Antwonson. And here's all the stinking numbers for you right there. What the heck was Nayimbi doing on that pitch? And it's centre back. And nope, that's a bit of a typo there. Uh, Williams does not get 75. He only gets the five. Dak are giving him seven just for the goal. You can see, see the obvious errors right there. Graham and Anderson would both have two. Two, two, that's two out of ten. Not two out of five, two out of ten. That's how horrendous they were. They're strikers. They're supposed to be putting the ball in the back of the net. I did not, it did not look like it was going to happen. It was the most frustrating 90 minutes of football I've seen in a long time. And to walk away with one point after 25 shots and only four on target. One of those were a goal. You know, something has to be done about that. I don't know. 
we have we have a, a goal scorer who is on fire in the reserves. Joe Nuttall has to start against Portsmouth. You can't be if you let these two players, Graham and Antonson, and even uh, who else to come? Dominic Samuel. You give him you give him 90 minutes against bottom of the table Plymouth, 25 shots, only four on target. And where you've got a guy who's knocking him in for fun, at least get him on the bench. At least he is on fire. You cannot deny form. You know, the four book says he's, he's like the top goal scorer in the Premier League too. So he, he, he must be accounted for something. When someone's on form, they're on form. No matter what, he, he could play the full 90 minutes and only touch the ball once. And I'm pretty sure that will be in the back of the net. So, what else? Uh, glad win. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being a Rovers player, but I think I'm 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 done with you, uh, Chapman. Yes, we love you to bits, and and you did create two or three of the most explosive chances on there. I think he needs to start against Portsmouth. I think he needs to swallow your pride on that one now, Mowbray, and give uh, and give Chapman a start against Portsmouth. Let him let him rip it up. We need to be taking. The, it looks like. This is, this is what I feel now. It looks like that we need to take the, the lead early doors. If we need to take, take, take the lead early doors, you've got to start with Chapman. Chapman is explosive. He rips open. I know I know your logic. I know your logic for Chapman. You put him on there when the defense is weakened. I get it. But maybe let's, let's mix it up a little bit. Obviously, your real recent form, even going back before the international break, we, we picked up a sloppy 1-0 uh, win. Um, against Gillingham, which wasn't really morale boosting. So we have the sloppy 1-0 one -nil, one -nil win against Gillingham, the pathetic 1-0 uh, defeat to Oldham, and now this pathetic 1-1 one -one draw against bottom of the table Plymouth. So something needs to be done. You need to revitalise that 11, bring in some youth who might be hungry. Rankin Costello, he, probably, he should be screaming out for first team action. William Tomlinson, get him in there. You know, you need to mix this up a bit and, and bring some new life into it. Nayimbi at centre-back. Come on, you've got Scott Wharton in the flipping uh, under 23s. You've got uh, like Doyle. Uh, all these youngsters who who are on our academy books, we're paying them anyway, and you stick a, a right back and a centre back. Conway, Conway instead of Gladwin. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously upset because that shouldn't have happened out there. 25 shots, walking away with 1 1, a 1 1 draw. That is embarrassing. We are the butt of jokes in this division, if not in the entire English Football League. We come in here, cocky as anything, think we're going to piss this league, but we don't. We put in this performance. I said before kickoff, after the Oldham game, that this was a must win. And I still believe, you know, we, we, we screwed up here. In fact, you screwed up here. You and the 11 players that started and the substitutes that you brought on. You know, the amount of money these guys get paid to stick the ball in the back of net at home, at home. And these Plymouth, Plymouth fans and the team have made a 300-mile trip to play at Ewood Park. And they, they, were, they were unfortunate to, to not take home three points. Unbelievable. Anyway, that's not what I said. Let's, uh, let's have a listen to what the gaffer had to say about the shambolic performance that was Rovers. Could it be his last game? Who knows? But anyway, here's Tony Mowbray with his post-match comments. Oh, um, yeah, I think so. I think the chances created, the pressure we put on them, the shots we would have had at their goal, and yet we you know, just lacked a little bit of guile, a little bit of craft, a bit of composure in the box to pick the right pass, to find the right finish. Um, and yet it was more like how I want the team to play, more on the front foot, more pressure on the opposition. You know, we, I, I took a chance really playing Ryan centre half tonight, but he does give us some mobility and, uh, and speed. And yet it was a bit hairy at times. He hasn't really got the composure and understanding of the position. And yet I think he does, he does bring us mobility and speed to try and take the team 20 yards higher up the pitch than we were at the weekend. And um, yeah, listen, we, it's frustrating because it was the night that, on the balance of play, we should have won. We didn't, and it's frustrating. But um, as the players have been saying, there's a lot of games to play. There's a lot of time for us to find some consistency, to find some ruthlessness and um, finish these teams off. Um, and I'm sure that'll come. You know, we've, I'm sure there's going to be a spell where we can win six, seven, eight, nine on the bounce and, um, you know, and really catapult our position. That said, our position is still 
reasonably healthy, you know, games in hand, we can definitely be in the top six and, and waiting to pounce, as I say, second half of the season. A bit of know-how, a bit of composure. Ball probably broke to the wrong players at times. Um, it's, it's football, it's, it's the quality of the final third. You watch, I watch Premier League and Champions League every week and the best players pick out the right pass and the ball's in the back of the net. Clinical wave going cold in the box. It's just lacking a little bit tonight, but uh, excuse me. <coughs> um, it'll come. We've just got to keep working on it. The team, you know, work in progress, really, I think, still and frustrating, but let's keep going. There was enough positives tonight to show everybody that we can win games at home. Yeah, listen, I've been pretty angry with them for a few times over the last three or four weeks, and. Um, but tonight, I don't think it was a night to be overly angry with them and question certain aspects of their performance. I think it was a night for... The reality was that we'd give it a real good shot. We were very dominant over the 90 minutes and yet we couldn't get the winning goal. Yeah, you think so? I think we, there was enough pressure to think that we were going to score. And, and you know, even right to the death, I'm not sure he even played the four minutes he put up, I don't think. But, um, you know, we had, we had some unbelievable chances even in that spell, I think. Um, and yet we gambled it a little bit. They they broke away twice, I think, in them last five or six minutes, which was because we were over gambling. But it showed me that we were trying to win the football match, and, um, and that's that's fine. There'll be plenty of games where we win um, if we play at that tempo and that sort of intensity, and, 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 and having as many chances in another game, we'll score more goals. No, he's quite upset in there, to be honest. If, you know, it was an opportunity for him. He hasn't played much football for us. It was a great chance. I'd asked him to go on and make the difference and um, played him in a central area. And it was there. It, it, hindsight, could you have just smashed it with the instep and just took the net off the goals? And he tried to side foot it and be precise and it ricocheted and it went over the bar. But um, listen, we have to take it on the chin. It's, Disappointing. Um, it was a night we should have got three points against a team who's been struggling in the league, and yet we do know that there's no easy games. They they almost beat Shrewsbury at the weekend. You know, I think ten minutes from the end, Shrewsbury got a late equaliser. It was so there's no mugs in this game and uh, in this league. We everybody works hard. Everybody's very competitive. Everybody's strong. Um, and so we we have to we have to accept it. We've got a point, and we have to move on. So that's what the Gaff had to say. Now let's take a look at what the fans had to say. Social media was lit up once again with Blackburn Rovers comments, especially from our fans. Here, let's take a look. Uh, on Twitter, at SatR for the boys. Players not putting them away. I was optimistic with the lineup, but just far too many missed chances. Meanwhile, Manchester Ben C said, another abysmal result, Rovers. Difficult to see where the next win is going to come from. Expect a Pompey win on Saturday, unfortunately. I am probably with you on that one, Ben. Mowbray swallows a bit of pride and dips his hand into the reserves. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I say reserves with a bit abated breath. You know, they're not reserves. They're hungry youngsters and they need to be given a chance. The form of the team itself is pretty decent. I know they get their chances in the Checker Trade Cup, but now we need to cherry pick some of the good ones. Nuttall is on stinking fire. He needs to come in there. Bring in a, a, a young, hungry midfielder, Moles, Rankin, Costello, Tomlinson, someone like that. These guys are getting too lazy. Gladwin and Flippin shouldn't be in the, in the in Lancashire for, for crying out loud. Get him out of there. Uh, who else? Antwinson is burning my bridges. Uh, I, I'm losing patience with him. Samuel. Uh, well, anyway, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ranting once again. Back into the back into the social media. Talk of Ewood says, A disappointing draw, but not the end of the world. Playing well in parts, win on Saturday is pivotal. I am disagree with that. Today was win. Today win was pivotal. Pompey, their mid-table side, in fact, right, they're right on par with us. 20 points, their 11th spot. Uh, right mid-table crunch clash, that one. Anyway, next one. At Rovers Tweet says, This is absolutely pathetic. Full-time, I'm lost for words, so I'll end it there. I wish I could. Uh, another Again on Twitter, Matt Nuttall says, Time for a change? Now, there we go. There, there were a lot of people out there on, on the Mowbray Out campaign. I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's carry on. Adam W27 said, Said it before, overpaid donkeys should scrap their wages and only get paid if they win. Piss poor. If football could be like that, it would be a pretty interesting business. Chris Stevens says, Yep, Joe Nuttall banging them in for fun. If he's not in Team Saturday, my faith lost in Mowbray. Exactly. Exactly. You've got 
these strikers, Antoine Son on loan, is a loanee, for crying out loud. I w I'd rather give game time to our own players. For starters, Samuel, can't shoot for shit. Graham, he's paid big bucks. He should be knocking him in for fun. He can't, so what the heck's he doing on there? Joe Nuttall, hungry little fella, coming on a one-year deal, knocking him in for fun, trying to prove a point. Is he going to get game time on Saturday? Who knows? Well, Matt OB86 says, Our fans are a shambles. Three weeks ago, fucking love Mo Ray. Now, he's got to go. Shite. Owners are a joke. Fans are close. I agree with you to a little point. I I like Mo Ray. But he needs to start getting results. Um, we do not belong in this division. So, why are we temp spot and the likes of Shrewsbury... No disrespect to, to them, but and, and, and Wigan, Bradford, Rotherham, Charlton, Oxford. Why are they in the top six and we are struggling to, to, to get a result with, with players who are paid a decent amount of money for this division? Why? So, as much as I love Mowbray, the results need to start taking shape. I know we do have two games in hand with a lot of the teams above us, but I'd rather be Rotherham right now, who've played those two games more than us, than us. Rotherham sit fourth spot, 24 points, um, and, and Rovers technically could get up to 26 and be on the same thing. But to be honest with you, I don't see where any wins are coming from. I don't know. We can't seem to find the back of the net. Anyway, back into the thick of things. Well done, the Bastard Rover. You came from behind to draw against the bottom club at home, so you must be delighted with that. And Lewis Rogers, bottom of the league, 610 mile round trip to Blackburn, taking 400 on Tuesday night. Come on, you greens. And they came, they saw, and they took home at a point. Something needs to be done within the next game. Mowbray needs to, to come out, and, and we need to, if, if we don't perform well against Portsmouth, and when I say perform well, I don't mean a 1 0 win. I mean a comfortable, demanding win. We need to put down a statement. And that statement. Cannot come from the, the squad that, that started today's match. Something needs to be injected into that team. Something hungry, something something passionate, somebody who's apt to make a point. Mowbray, use your resources, draft in some of these youngsters, give them a chance, show the pros or the senior squad what, what they're capable of. And believe me, I am sure you'll get a result on Saturday against Portsmouth. Just miserable. I'm absolutely miserable. I don't know. I just don't know where our next win's coming from. And I fear I fear for your job. I, well, I would fear for your job, Mowbray. Um, but we've we got Venkies as owners. So to be honest with you, you're likely to get a, a pay rise if things go, if they continue this way. But if they do start to, to realize what a situation that we're in, I think you've probably, you've, you've got to the end of the month to turn things around in my eyes. If we were to get out of this division automatically, I thought we, we needed to win this game. Or some other results might have went your favour. In fact, that brings me on to our ne the next topic of the day. Let's take a gander at some of the results. So Wigan were top of the pops at the start of this, uh, this evening's football. But they were held to a away 1-1 draw against strugglers Gillingham. So it's not always uh, sunshine and roses for, for Wigan. Uh, other results. Portsmouth. Our next opponents, they suffered a away defeat to Doncaster, 2-1. Gary Bowyer's Blackpool back to winning ways, 2-1 winners. They currently lie in seventh spot, so it shows what kind of magic he's working. Um, another team that we're likely to visit towards the end of the month, Fleetwood picking up a 1-1 draw at Scunthorpe. Big winners of the day, Shrewsbury, four zip winners over Bristol Rovers. Anyway, that's pretty much all I've got for you today. I have, I have been ripping up your ear a little bit tonight, but I am a little bit angry. But uh, before I go, make sure you head over to my YouTube channel and give me a like for this video and make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you want a little bit of uh, tonic for today's um, a shambolic performance, check out my FIFA 95 version of this game. I think it's a very, very more favorable result for Blackburn. Um, definitely not a, a piss poor 1-1 one -one draw with 25 shots um, uh, for the day and only four on target. Um, but yes, make sure you, you give me a like for this video and hit the subscribe button. I am on Twitter, SoundCloud, Facebook and iTunes if you want to check me out on the go. Uh, I'm going to go get my head down because this has been a real uh, frustrating performance. Uh, my heart has been in my mouth. To be honest with you, this should have, the, the last 
three or four minutes of that match, we should have probably scored four goals. If we had Joe Notto on there, it probably would have bagged that hat trick. But anyway, I'm going to end it right there. Until next time, uh, I'll be doing a Pompey preview video in the next day or so. So feel free to check that bad boy out. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.